So often, we human beings carry unlit fires in us, unfulfilled desires, unrealized ambitions. It's like we're walking around living part of our life, but not all of our life. My interest is in lighting those fires, in making the life that we're living the big, whole, radiant life that we aspire to. Because our time is so brief. As my mother and many others have said, we only get a few trips around the sun. And what better way to spend those trips than in giving them our full-hearted all? Now, there are a million and one ways to do this, but the way that I'm especially interested in is risk-taking. Because so many of those things that we aspire to, the work, the relationships, the opportunities, are on the other side of risk. So today, I want to speak with you about the art of risk-taking. But before we talk about anything, I want to be really clear about one thing. I am not a natural-born risk-taker. I didn't come into the world with any extra guts or gumption. Actually, my fear nearly killed me. A little while after college, I moved to the great wilds of Washington, D.C. I had two jobs, few friends, and no real sense of belonging or mattering in this new town. Now, I like roadmaps and lifetime warranties, routines, and formulas, but what I was finding is that when it comes to making our way in the world, there are no certainties. We're not guaranteed anything, and most of life is out of our control. So in an effort to control something, I began to control the food that I put in my body. And I controlled it down to two apples, some cut vegetables, a few pieces of turkey, and a glass of skim milk a day. I lost the muscle to open doors and the energy to care. I was tired most of the time and cold all of the time. When I looked in the mirror, I was terrified by the anorexia that I saw. But the thought of changing to something less controlled was even more terrifying. My mother kept on trying to say something, and I kept on shutting her down. Until one June night, when I was little more than a skeleton, she said with incredible tenderness, I'm afraid you're killing yourself, and you don't realize it. And her compassion, this huge and great-hearted force, shook awake in me something that was larger than my fear, which was this immense desire to live life, not just to creep timidly through our few minutes on Earth, but to light those fires and chase down those ambitions and just go all in, damn those torpedoes. And that desire had been overshadowed by my fear but it had not been overpowered by it. Because as has been said, fear may be great, but we are still greater. So that June night, when my mother reminded me that I had a larger life in me to live than the small one I'd been living, I began my recovery. My recovery from anorexia, absolutely. But also, my recovery from fear. And recovery, slow, humbling, Ongoing recovery forced me to look with ruthless honesty at my own life, which led me to make one of the best decisions that I've made, to spend my time as a reflection of my values. And one of my top values is to choose living over existing, contributing over bystanding, taking risks over playing it safe. So I want to tell you a little about the path I've taken since that June night with my mother. I stayed in DC. I worked my way up to being a senior foreign policy advisor in Congress. And this was a great job with great people. And after a few years, I realized I wanted to contribute to the world in another way. But when I looked across the horizon, I didn't see an organization that was doing what I wanted to do. So I left Congress to build the business that I wanted to give to the world. And the purpose of this business is to use writings and workshops to enable as many people as possible to narrow the divide between where they are and where they want to be. 
Now, this is not a certain or stable life that I'm building for myself, but it is a life where I'm contributing in the way that I want to. And that, for me, is worth all the instability, all the uncertainty, all those leaps in the dark. So I've learned a little bit about risks and how we can get better at taking them, and that is just what I want to talk about right now. So first things first, when I talk about a risk, I am not talking about something that would cause us or anyone else physical, emotional, or any kind of harm. Those aren't risks, those are risky behavior. That's not what we're talking about today. So here's what I think a risk is, and it's pretty simple. It's just a step outside of our comfort zone. Now, it could be a little step, it could be a large step, but we've each got different comfort zones, right? So what constitutes a risk is a real individual thing. So maybe for me, saying yes to karaoke is no big whoop, but for you, that could be a gigantic risk. But maybe for you, asking for help is no big whoop. But for me, that's a gigantic risk. So if we've each got different comfort zones, we've each got different things that constitute steps outside of them. So comparing my risks to your risks is like comparing apples to seahorses. There's nothing gained. Plus, comparison misses the point. The point isn't me taking the risks that would impress you and you taking the risks that would impress me. The point is each one of us taking those unique risks that stand between where we are and where we want to be. My aim today is to share with us some tools to help us start taking those risks and living that life that we aspire to. But first, I want to tell you about a job that I really wanted that I really had no qualifications for. So in the job description, it said they were looking for someone who had a real familiarity with Central and South American issues which I did not have. I'd heard that they were hoping to find someone who had served in the Peace Corps, which I had not done. And then there was a line in the job description which was in Spanish, which I did not speak, read, or write. So I forwarded it to my best friend who was fluent, and I asked her, what does this say? And she said, it says, please only apply if you can read and write in Spanish. So I had very little going for me. Now, what does conventional wisdom say here? Don't apply. It's a crazy waste of time. But here's the thing, and I know a lot of you know this, but it bears repeating. Every time we don't throw our hat in the ring for something that we want, we disqualify ourselves before the race has even started. Now, we might not get what we want if we throw that hat in the ring, but we will definitely not get what we want if we don't risk going for it. So I want us to get better acquainted with taking risks. In fact, I want us to get downright good at taking risks. And it's actually not so hard, and it comes down to this. Wake up every day and commit to taking one risk that day. It doesn't have to be big, but it does have to be done. Because risk-taking is an ability that we all have. We just need to practice at it. Now, how can we become victorious at developing this ability? Well, I think it's a little bit like learning an instrument. If I decide that I'm going to start playing the piano today, is the first piece that I try going to be Beethoven's Moonlight Sonata? No. I'm going to start with something a little smaller, a little more accessible, a little bit gentler, right? So maybe chopsticks or heart and soul to begin. So I think risk works a very similar way. We don't start off with the Moonlight Sonata of risk. We're going to start off with those smaller, simpler heart and soul kind of risks. So maybe it's raising our hand during a Q&A one day, correcting someone if they misspell or mispronounce our name another day, saying, I don't know, even when we think we really should know the next day. Then, after we've grounded ourselves in this, add in the occasional medium-sized risk. So submit an op-ed you wrote to a publication you really care about. Risk speaking your truth, even though you know it might not be popular. Say yes to a long weekend away or no to someone you really want to help and just can't. Then, a little later on, add in some bigger risks. Apply for that job you really want, even if you don't have 100% of the qualifications. Accept someone's offer for help. Risk kindness in the face of unkindness. And day by day, risk by risk, that ability establishes itself in our way of being. Now, that all sounds good, right? 
But I want to talk a little bit about accountability, because it's all too easy to let that muscle atrophy, that ability to atrophy, if we don't have an accountability mechanism in place. So here is mine. Every night, my alarm goes off at 9.41 PM. And that is my prompt to stop what I am doing and write down the risk that I took that day. And I got to tell you, this little act, it is like ringing the victory bell. And I get to ring it even if I didn't get the outcome that I wanted. Because the beauty, the glory, the victory is in taking the risk. And every time we take that risk, that ability gets a little bit stronger, and risk taking gets a little bit easier. Now, our accountability mechanism, it doesn't have to be an alarm on our phone. It could be a note on our bathroom mirror, an alert on our scheduler. But whatever it is, commit to it. Respect it. Totally. It will always be easier to destroy a good habit than create one. But from where I stand, it is the creators among us who will move the world forward. And here's the thing. The change that we want to make and the life that we want to live is not going to show up one day in the mail. We have to go out and make it, shape it, build it, and create it. And fear of risk should not get in the way. Because we have so much life to live and such finite time to live it in. Now, remember that job I told you about that I had no qualifications for? No Peace Corps, no Latin America, no Spanish. Well, I really wanted it. So I applied. In my resume, it was crystal clear I had nothing they were looking for. But in my cover letter, I said, I'm ready, and I'm willing, and I'm able to learn. And they hired me, and they paid for me to take Spanish lessons. Will that definitely always happen? No. But it definitely won't happen if we don't risk going for it. Now, it is no secret there is plenty of stuff that can get in the way of us taking risks. I don't know about for you, but for me, I have a lot of untaken risks in me. And I think for some of us, if we ask ourselves, what's stopping us from taking those risks? The answer boils down to just one short word, fear. And it's absolutely my top answer. And some of the best direction I've gotten on fear comes from a tremendous woman named Sister Simone Campbell. I once did an interview with her, and I asked her, how do you handle the things that, scared you, that scare you? And I loved the first part of her answer. It was just three words long. Walk towards them. Because when we walk towards our fear, I found from following her advice, it gets a little bit smaller. And smaller still, the more that we walk towards it. Now, I want to be clear here. This does not mean that we walk towards a grizzly bear, right? Or towards a dark alley on a dark night. Or, as we discussed before, towards anything that's going to cause us or anyone else physical, emotional, or any kind of harm. But it does mean that we walk towards the things that we're hiding from, those things that we have it in us to do, but our courage has fallen short. And when we walk towards them, what we're doing is making a decision. We are deciding to lean out of our fear and in to our courage. And that is one of the most powerful decisions we human beings can make around fear. Now, I want to be really clear here. It is Totally normal to have fear. It's part of the deal when we sign up to be human beings. Have the fear, just don't let the fear have you. Because our world is moved forward by people who take the risks and who decide again and again that they will not be defined by their fears. So we have this life that we aspire to. And my invitation to each one of us today is to start moving towards it risk by risk, making that ability stronger and stronger until the life that we are living is the big, whole, radiant life that we aspire to. If you do that, you will make history, and I will look forward to reading about you. Thank you.